Hey everyone, Wolf Lord Row here. Today we're talking the Custodes knowledge of the Minotaurs chapter. Spoiler warning to begin as the events we're discussing today are from the Watchers of the Throne series novel, The Regent Shadow, by author Chris Rate. As always, I really recommend you read the stories for yourself first, without spoilers, as that's the best way to enjoy the lore for yourself. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. So earlier in the week, we discussed five Space Marine chapters I'd love to see get some spotlight during the next edition. Chapters who perhaps have an open story we'd really love to get some more answers to. And one of the chapters I chose was that of the Minotaurs. Now the Minotaurs are a fairly infamous chapter, with a history surrounded in no small amount of mystery. Believed founded during the so-called Cursed Founding, they are a chapter not only believed founded with traitor gene seed, outside the law at least, but also one with suspicious links to the High Lords of Terror. Why the High Lords may want a chapter founded on traitor lineage? Well, that's a debate for another day. The theories and mystery even extends to the Minotaur's chapter master, Asterian Moloch, who despite having a reputation for Iron Warrior style siege and attrition, is such an embodiment of violence and a hulking sized Astartes, there's fan theories out there he could be a thunder warrior who escaped the Emperor's Purge, or even one of the Emperor's own custodies, possibly one of the eyes of the Emperor. While to me these theories are extremely unlikely, the link between the Minotaurs and the custodies is thought-provoking, for if any order out there would know the truth of the Minotaurs, the realities of their ties to the High Lords of Terror, well, then surely it should be the Custodes. And while we may never get all the answers we seek, we've at least been able to see some of the Custodes' opinion and reaction to the Minotaur chapter, thanks to the novel The Regent Shadow. Now, in the aftermath of the Primarch Rebute Gilliman's return, we know he returned to Terra to speak with his father. From there he unveiled the Primaris project, decided upon the huge undertaking of the Indomitus Crusade, and then launched his counterattack across the stars, taking the fight back to chaos. For all his good intentions, however, the Primarch left behind a throne world still reeling like the rest of its empire. And though the palace itself was secure, the battle for control across the rest of the world was still raging within the hidden corners and depths of the hives. And thus it was during this time, the rebel high lord still in power, and those removed by Gilliman himself, enacted their plan to remove Gilliman from power. And it was during these events, as the Custodes and Imperial Fists were working to put down rebellions across Terra, that the Minotaur's chapter appeared. Unknown and unasked for, not even informing the Fists or Custodians of their arrival. And this initial revelation and encounter was where we got to see Custodian Valerian's thoughts on the Minotaur's chapter. I knew that they seldom deployed at less than full chapter strength, which was highly unusual for Space Marines. I knew that their equipment was said to be excellent, indicating that they had some favoured link with either the Adeptus Terra or the Armorites of Mars. I knew that their chapter master, Asterium Moloch, had led them for a very long time, and had been rumoured dead more than once only to be spied in another battleground on another world, back to full health. I knew that they were fleet-based, occupying the immense assault carrier, Daedalos Crusher. 
Now, Valerian is far from a custodian of prominence, such as Captain General Trajan Valoris. However, he does pride himself somewhat of being more a scholar in nature than a warrior, spending a lot of his time reading and researching the history and wider Imperium beyond. And considering his research is conducted within the walls and libraries of the Inner Palace itself, home to forgotten records and knowledge such as Gilliman's Imperium Secundus, if the Custodians had any deeper knowledge of the Minotaur's chapter readily available, you would expect Valerian to know it. Instead, here, it appears even he, a Custodian, is left to infer just as much as anyone else from rumour and intrigue. The knowledge of Chapter Master Moloch having believed died several times only to have appeared once more certainly plays into the theories it could perhaps be more a title than one actual person. That every Marine who becomes Chapter Master becomes Asterium Moloch rather than it being the same long-standing warrior. The truth is of course yet to be known. Perhaps the most intriguing part for me is Valerian's observations just before that, with him knowing their equipment was said to be excellent and that it indicated favoured links with the Adeptus Terra or Mars. That is quite clearly a huge piece of evidence regarding their involvement with the High Lords of Terra. How the chapter is most likely top of the list, or probably more appropriately not even on the list, in receiving its equipment. That there's some form of priority or back channel standing order for the Minotaurs to get everything they need for them to always be able to fulfil the High Lord's demands. On the one hand, you could say a clear example of corruption of the High Lords of Terra as they were, placing their own chapter and desires above the rest. Chapters in far greater need. However, on the other hand, you could say the Emperor played favourites, such as with Russ and the Space Wolves Legion. Okay, no, he may not have ensured they were supplied over others. However, he did give them allowances he didn't allow other Primarchs or Legions. Is it really that different with the High Lords of Terra? I mean, really. You could even argue the Minotaurs are fulfilling the same role for the High Lords of Terra as the Space Wolves did for the Emperor. But anyway, Valerian continues in his observations, reflecting how rumours of their fortress monastery being destroyed makes no sense. Or quite simply, it's just an out-and-out -out lie, as he knows they are a fleet-based chapter. He also reveals Imperial records mention a chapter of the Minotaur's name, from as far back as 4,000 years ago. And there is debate as to if these Minotaurs are indeed the same chapter. And he then realises the Minotaurs he has encountered have Primaris within their ranks. The very first Primaris Marines Valerian has ever seen. Now, this may not sound unusual. However, again... Gilliman has barely just left Terra. And yet here, already, deployed into action as fully-fledged marines of the Minotaur's chapter, are the Primaris. And it really leaves Valerian quite surprised on how they are here. Which in turn really begs the question of when they receive them. Not to mention a whole host of other questions. Considering the time... The Minotaurs must have been the very first chapter to receive Primaris. And considering the upheaval and reluctance of the Firstborn in welcoming these new recruits, pretty universally across all the chapters as well, it does make you wonder if the Minotaurs somehow receive them even earlier. As impossible as it may be. 
The more I talk about the Minotaurs, the more and more topics and conversations begin to arise. I'm definitely tempted to do a Minotaurs week soon, have all the conversations on the chapter in one go. I think I'll start planning that along with the Tau Empire focused week I'd like to do. However, I digress. It's after this initial meeting with the Minotaurs that we get perhaps the closest piece of insight into just what the Custodes' level of understanding is, at least from Valerian's point of view. Our integration into the structures of the Imperium was closer than it had been for centuries. Our Captain General was a serving High Lord now, and had official access to everything they did. The belief had always been that the Minotaurs and High Lords acted in concert, although such a link had never been publicly acknowledged and could have been just another false story about them. Valoris was in the best position of any of us to uncover the truth of that, but the Council had not met in full session since the Primarch's departure and so it was possible that any relationship was still obscure, even to him. So here we have confirmation of the belief that the Custodes did always believe the High Lords controlled the Minotaurs. Yet such is the sensitivity of that knowledge that not even the Emperor's Custodes themselves could say for certain which definitely falls in line with the rumour even the Inquisition have struggled to get access to the Minotaur's records. It seems absolutely certain, whatever the reason the High Lords created the Minotaur's for, they didn't want anyone to know about it. Also fairly convincingly confirming the traitor gene seed belief to me, which again raises so many questions. Because if Belisarius Call created the Minotaur Primaris, he must know its traitor gene seed, which is something he has kept quiet. We can also see from Valerian's words why perhaps the Custodes don't actually know more for certain. Because quite simply they haven't been involved previously, as they are now. Our integration into the structures of the Imperium was closer now than it had been for centuries. While the Captain General of the Custodes has always had the ability to take a seat upon the High Lords of Terror, quite simply it's not a duty they have always fulfilled. The Captain General of the Custodes has over the centuries left the governance of the Imperium to itself and has only previously occupied a seat upon the High Lords during the gravest of times. While the Custodes' dedication to their sole duty, protection of the Emperor, can be commended, it's clear it's also left them relatively out of the loop for such a powerful and integral faction. Without the Captain General occupying a seat consistently, the High Lords of Terror have been able to conceal countless and untold secrets from the talons of the Emperor. It's quite possibly perhaps been the Custodes' gravest error over the past 10,000 years, taking for granted just what the High Lords could be doing in secret. As Valerian correctly surmised, now with Trajan Valoris truly taking his seat as a High Lord, playing an integral part of the Imperium once again, perhaps the truth of the High Lord's previous actions will come to light, including their mysterious past and ties to the Minotaur's chapter. But as always everyone, what do you think? Are you surprised by the Custodes' lack of knowledge on the Minotaur's chapter? Of all the factions out there who could and maybe should know more of this chapter, do you feel that maybe it is the Custodes? Do you think we'll begin to see more actions and secrets of the High Lords begin to be revealed? 
Now that Trajan Valoris is upon the council, could we get more knowledge revealed in Custodian stories? Do you see the High Lord's use of the Minotaurs as vastly different to the Emperor and the Wolves? Or can you accept the similarities? And how much of the Minotaur's history do you ever think we'll see? Will this chapter remain one of the Astartes' biggest mysteries? As always, leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. If you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. With that said, I am off, and I'll see you all again real soon.